Viewers, welcome back to the Personal Injury Law Show. Before the break, we're talking about transport accidents and in particular, the pain and suffering damages. Now, I did say to Don, I thanked him for coming on the show, but we've substituted John for Don. John <laughs> wanted a break and Don decided to do the show with us. Yes. Thanks That's for right. staying on, Don. I do appreciate it. My and pleasure. Kathy, Good Welcome. evening. How are you? Good, thank you. Good evening, Tony. Good evening, Don. Good evening. And good evening, viewers. Well, can I just say what a fantastic show. You are a natural and very, very informative. So thank you very much for coming back and for stepping in for John. <laughs> no, look, I appreciate it. It was very, very informative, I think. Mm. And... Uh, Absolutely, I do. Because every week we seem to be running out of time. I so. know, but that's because we've got so many questions. And actually tonight we'll be focusing mainly on TSC <laughs> queries as there's been quite a few of them that have come through. So I'll start off and um, we've got our TSC expert to answer them for us tonight. To the PI show, I was riding a bicycle in a bicycle lane. I was passing a parked car when the driver opened the door and I collided with the door. I suffered multiple injuries including a fractured knee joint. I took several months off work and now I'm on a return to work program. Do I have any rights to compensation? And this is from Colette in South Bank. Now, that's pretty bad for Colette, Don, because, I mean, it's something unexpected when, to be colliding with a, a parked car as well. So does she have rights under TAC? Uh, look, look, she does. Um, under the TAC, if an injury is caused as a result of a opening door, a cyclist hitting, hitting an opening door of a car, they're entitled to receive compensation from the TAC, so she must lodge a claim for compensation as soon as possible. Uh, also, following that, she'll be entitled to receive medical expenses, income, and also a lump sum. And of course, follow from that, Tony, there'll be a common law claim for damages. Sounds like she sustained a very significant Don, injury. Don, the, the, in, the injury she sustained sounds very nasty, so I think she'd be entitled to common law damages. But yeah. Don, this business of people opening car doors, it seems to be more prevalent these days. Very common these days. There's a lot more cyclists on the road, in, in my view, anyway. There's a lot. There's a lot, lot, lot. And you, you do have that designated um, bicycle lanes, which pretty much means you're riding alongside parked cars most of the time. So there is very, very prevalent in this. What about out in East Melbourne, how dangerous it is? Because you've got the cyclist lane next to the curbside. Then you've got the car in the middle of the road. I reckon the real problem is for the people getting out of cars. Not yeah. getting hit by a car. <laughs> That's right. It's That's right. bizarre how they've done those. Yeah. Is that from overseas, is it? Must be, Tony. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. I don't know. Consult but, um, the lawyer. Definitely, definitely. And we hope that you get better as well, Colette. There's, that's unfortunate injury that you have. Um, moving on. This is, um, this is an interesting question, and it comes from Sharon in Brunswick, Don, who writes, My elderly mum recently fell, fell whilst on a tram and she suffered injuries. Mum told me that she got on a tram when she was about to sit down. The tram moved and jolted. She fractured her hip as a result. She was taken by an ambulance and um, to a hospital and she's also had surgery now. Does she have any rights against the tram company? Now, that's really, really sad. I mean, she's an yes. elderly lady. And they do take a little bit of time to actually walk to a, to a seat, but it moved and jolted and she's hurt her hip. So can you help? <laughs> Look, it's similar to Colette's claim from before. She, uh, it's Sharon from Brunswick. Her mother has an entitlement under the TAC scheme again. Uh, as it was an incident directly arising from the driving of the tram, then she's entitled to receive those similar medical expenses if she's working, which I don't think she was, Cathy, but, uh, and also an impairment. She may also have that common law claim if she sustained a serious injury, which once again it sounds like she has. A lot of no hip injury mm. for an elderly lady oh, would have serious consequences to it. Don't so. I would have thought so. The, the main thing about about there, Sharon, is you should get or should report it. If you haven't reported, it, should report it straight away to the tram company, and also should also get an incident report. Mm. Quite, and because you'll need the name of or the the number of the tram, where it was, and all those details. And yeah, what you need is the number. Yeah. Sorry, you need Tony. the number of the tram. And make sure you've got the time the tram actually uh, left because mm. you'll find that if you've got the timing, they'll be able to pinpoint it to a particular drive. That's right. Don, That's does right. age play a factor at all given that she was an elderly lady? Oh, not at all. Not, not, not at all. Well, in terms of her injuries, unfortunately, that, that injury is quite significant mm. for anyone, let alone Kathy, a there's the eggshell skull principle, which means that notwithstanding who your victim is, you take your victim as you find them. So if you've got someone that's got a hard head and you can't fracture it, Good luck to them, but if they've got a very thin skull and they get injured, they're entitled to compensation. So, age well, doesn't play well, so a part. Sharon, you should have your mum seek legal advice as there's rights for compensation from what we've got here, but um, obviously more facts will be 
um, needed and an incident report, as the boys were saying fact, as well. If I'm not mistaken, didn't you have a case similar to that recently, Doc? What we did was a little old lady who unfortunately fell in a tram and that, that resolved uh, pretty quickly. Tony. She had a bilateral hip old. injury, didn't she? she? She did. She sustained a bilateral uh, hip injury and, and look, she was very elderly and very frail and similar circumstances and, and ultimately her claim settled in quick time. But didn't the complications in that case arise from the fact that there was no report of the incident? That was one of the stumbling blocks. There wasn't a report of the incident, so it's really just her word. She did have the name of the tram driver which seems to have, uh, for whatever reason, she took it on a piece of paper and she kept it. And that helped us a lot because it proved, well, at least it was an incident. She was on the tram. But I thought the other problem you had with the case, and your case was discounted a little bit, was because of the fact that when she went to the doctors, she didn't uh, describe the incident the same way. That's right. She did wait a little bit to get to the doctors, which was over a week, to complain of hip pain or similar pains. Uh, but that's right, Tony. It was a different version of events that was given as well. So had, sh had there been an incident report at the time, I don't think that would have been an issue at all, Tony. They would have just accepted straight away. But okay. we did have to feel those things. I think you need consistency of information. That's right. And yeah. even if you have a tr an incident on a tram, uh, these days you've got CCTV and you can get access to the CCTV as well, which I haven't okay. copied the... Uh, uh, incident. And, and that helps prove the case as well. It does. So. It does. And you'll find that there's people that come to your aid more often than not, so you've got to get their names as mm. well. It can't hurt. Oh, okay, well, right. we have to move on to our last question for the evening, and it's from Troy in Doncaster. And he writes, Dear PR Show, I work as a truck driver. Recently, I was engaged to do a long haul shift. After 15 hours of non stop driving, I drifted off the side of the road and hit a pole. I have suffered injuries to my neck and back. Do you think I have a claim against my employer? Now that's that's not good at all for Troy if he's um, if he's been exhausted after that many hours of driving and he's actually drifted off. So we hope that you um, you get better. But now this is interesting, Tony, because there's two sides to this. He was there driving is. a truck whilst in the course of his employment. Well, his no fault benefits a work cover, mm -hmm. so he's entitled to loss of income and also his medical and associated expenses. But then if he wants to sue the employer, he's got to go through the Transport Accident Commission provisions. So he'd have to that's lodge correct. a. Um, an application for serious injury with the Transport Accident Commission. That's but correct. then he'd have to sue his, uh, his employer again. Well, that's right. And uh, but it will be the employer will be insured by the TAC because right. it's, an, uh, it's the driving of the vehicle that caused the accident or that's caused right. the injury and the TAC indemnifies the owner or driver of a vehicle. And plus the fact that he's driving for 15 hours is in breach of OH&S laws, occupational health and safety, and they're not expected to do that in any event. If he got pulled over by the police, he would have been in all sorts of strife because you cannot, you cannot drive for that length of time without a break. All right, all right well, um, Troy, seek show. legal advice. It's a little bit complicated, but um, hopefully we can, someone can help you there. But uh, please, viewers, keep writing into us at, um, at the address info at thepishow.com. We love answering your questions, and thank you again for watching. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Thanks Tony. Thanks, viewers, and stay Good safe. Night.